Welcome to the Bachelor of Science in Nursing information session. Um, as you noted, this session will be recorded. Uh, it, so it won't show your faces as you're uh, all listed as attendees here in this webinar and your faces aren't visible to us anyway. So uh, we will be recording this session and then we will be placing it um, on our YouTube channel for anybody who misses anything or wants to review it later. To get started, uh, my name is Erin Ruggieri. I'm one of the three marketing coordinators for School of Health Sciences at uh, BCIT. Our info session today is gonna to be presented by one of the Bachelor of Science Nursing program heads, Jim Hunter. And then we'll also have Bavina from Program Advising come on the call and she will uh, tell us about kind of the ins and outs of how to apply to the program and kind of all those background details uh, that you need to know. Um, but again, I really wanna thank everyone for joining us today. I'm gonna to try and keep up with things that are in the chat at the uh, same time, but um, as we go along, if you have any questions, please do type them into the Q&A feature. Uh, we'll leave the chat for other things, but if you could type questions you have into the Q&A, uh, we will try to answer some of those throughout the session. And then uh, any that we don't answer through the session, we'll answer at the end of the session and we'll have some time for additional questions at the end. So either type them in as we go or save them to the end and we'll be sure to try and get to as many of those as we can. Uh, I think that's all the little housekeeping details I have there. Moving on to uh, our next slide here. If I can, I'm just trying to multiple screens. Uh, so I want to acknowledge that the British Columbia Institute of Technology uh, is located on the unceded traditional territories of the Coast Salish nations of the Squamish, tsleil and Musqueam. So our agenda the, today, I was gonna say this morning, but it's noon now. Our agenda today is a welcome and introduction. So that's what I'm doing right now. Presentation and program overview, program advising, and as I mentioned, additional Q&A at the end. Uh, so with that, I wanted to pass it over to Jim. Uh, Jim, should we start with our poll questions? Sure. Okay, so I will launch our first question. You should see this pop up on your screen. How many nurses are there in the province of BC? So multiple choice, no wrong answer, but one is closest to right. <laughs> so if you just want to click and select, I see a lot of people answering this question. We're getting answers across the board on this one. Jim, do you know which one is closest to right? 35,000. 35,000, so 35% of you got that one right. That would that be is a lot of nurses, wow. That would be closest to registered nurses, but when we include other nurses, practical nurses, et cetera, the number is a lot higher. Wow. Okay, so our second question, one more poll here. Which post-secondary in BC graduates the most nurses each year? Is it UBC, Langara, BCIT, or Douglas? Looks like most of you got that one right. BCIT does graduate the most nurses out of all these, uh, the post-secondaries in BC each year. Do we know which one's second place, Jim? Is it UBC? You're on mute, Jim. Sorry, I'm not 100% sure which one. Well, which we know that we're, we're, we know we, we graduate the most, so that's yeah. the important part. We're the largest. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing that and uh, take it away, Jim. All right, thank you very much, Aaron. So um, we're going to talk about what is the uh, Bachelor of Science in Nursing at BCIT. So uh, next slide, Erin, I'll start with some quick facts. So our program is three years in length and it is nine 12 week terms in, uh, so three terms per year. We go from September until the end of June, um, July and August uh, students have off. Our program is only offered full time um, and it's a mix of classroom lab and clinical in every term. Um, and our experiences vary from community to um, hospital, you may be in acute care, home care, public health, mental health uh, throughout the nine, nine terms in the program. And we also offer an introduction to specialty nursing electives. Next slide, please. So what does a BCIT nursing grad look like? So uh, we have several attributes that we strive for. So uh, these are them listed professional, leader, advocate, collaborator, global citizen, lifelong learner, and communicator. So our graduates have a broad uh, foundation and knowledge depth 
um, that allows them to make evidence informed decisions, establish priorities and provide safe, competent, ethical and compassionate care in diverse situations. Our graduates maintain standards of nursing practice and professional conduct in all contexts and situations. Nurses are part of a regulated profession. A BCIT grad demonstrates leadership by engaging with members of the healthcare team to identify, plan, implement, and evaluate innovative actions that lead to safe, effective, and efficient client care. BCIT BSN grads demonstrate the ethical duty to champion individuals, communities, and groups in the achievement of positive health outcomes. BCIT BSN grad, grads collaborate effectively with diverse clients and members of the healthcare team to provide high quality care. Our grads demonstrate the ability to advocate for change to address issues of social justice, health inequity, or other disparities affecting the health of clients. We have a focus on incorporating global citizenship into nursing practice by demonstrating cultural safety with clients and the healthcare team. Our grads demonstrate a lifelong commitment to excellence in nursing practice through continuous self-directed learning, professional development, knowledge translation, currency and trends in nursing and healthcare, critical appraisal of information and contributions to nursing scholarship. BCIT BSN grads communicate effectively with clients and healthcare team members to support safe, high quality client-centered healthcare in diverse situations and contexts. So that's what our grads look like at the end of the program. Next slide, please. Um, so what makes a, a successful BSN student? So able to manage stress and anxiety effectively. The program is demanding. It takes a lot of effort, work. You're collaborating with other people, collaborating with clients and patients. Um, so <clears throat> it can be stressful at times. Um, so to be an effective communicator, you need to be fluent in written and spoken English. Assertiveness is required. Nurses have to communicate with patients, families, and other health care professionals. And so you have to be assertive or it can become a safety issue uh, in the care setting. Having related volunteer or work experience is an asset. So this can be things like volunteering in a care home, lifeguarding, or sports leadership. It's nice to have, but it's not required. Um, leadership skills are an asset, so the ability to take initiative, be a problem solver, work in a professional manner. Experience with teamwork is an asset, so having good interpersonal skills to work effectively with other people. Managing your stress and anxiety, having an understanding of shift work. Throughout our program, most of our clinical shifts are days or evenings, um, but as you get towards the end of the program, you may be doing night shifts as well. And basic math skills are essential. Uh, this is important for a number of uh, factors, most importantly for administering medication. Next slide, please, Erin. Um, so for career outlook, uh, there's a lot of jobs available for nurses. It's a, a challenging and rewarding career. Nurses are in demand you know, throughout the province of BC, Canada, and worldwide, our grads uh, work globally. Um, we specialty nursing options are available to you after graduation from your BSN program. Um, and there's a lot of career growth opportunities, including master's degrees and beyond. Next slide, please, Sarah. So what can a nurse do? So um, when you graduate from our program, you can work in areas such as medical, surgical, nursing, and hospital. So most of us are probably familiar with that either through a family member or other means. Um, public health is an option. Public health has played a significant role during the past two years uh, of the COVID pandemic. Um, home health is an area where a lot of nurses work. Emergency rooms, critical care, that includes ICU and step-down units, mental health, can be acute psychiatric units or community care settings um, and global health initiatives. There's also opportunities for nurses in administration or management, teaching like we're doing or research. Uh, next slide, please, Erin. 
So um, specialty nursing, uh, we give you an introduction to specialty nursing through a number of electives and occasionally uh, clinical uh, preceptorship at the end of the program. Um, however, once you've graduated, uh, you can take any one of these specialty nursing courses, which are available through BCIT, and they're all listed there for you. Um, and for people who are already an RN, that specialty nursing info session is on Thursday, June 9th. So we will expose you to some of these specialties through your electives. That doesn't occur until towards the end of second year in our program when we start talking about it. Uh, next slide, please, Aaron. This is a testimonial from a recent uh, BSN graduate. So I'm just gonna give you a minute to read through it on your own. So this student feels that she was really well prepared um, to be out there and to be working. And the last couple of years for nurses and students have been challenging. And so this is a student who went through that period of time um, and it was a real asset. Fortunately, things are starting to settle down, but we've had pandemics before and we've had the current one and in your career, potentially you'll see another one. So um, the experience we gained throughout all of these um, is a real asset to us. And so for this student, she felt our program prepared her for that. So that's great to hear. And that's all I have to say, but I'll monitor the um, questions as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Bavina, who's going to tell us a bit more about the application process and how to uh, apply to the BSN program. Thank you. Thanks, Erin. Um, so I'll be reviewing the entrance requirements, the admission process, along with some key student services that are available to you at BCIT. So here are some key dates. There are three intakes per year with 96 seats in each intake. Admission is competitive, so the date you apply does not have an impact on your application, but the earlier you apply, the sooner you'll have confirmation on whether or not you've met the minimum requirements. And you do have until the deadline date to apply to be considered for uh, entry into that intake. Filling up the application online is relatively straightforward. Once the application opens for each cycle, you can log on and review the online application. You can work on filling out the application at your own pace. Um, and it really doesn't go to the admissions office until you've paid the application fee. Now, the date you apply does not have an impact on your application. Again, you have until the application deadline to submit your application. Regarding the application process, um, you'll firstly review all the entrance requirements and the application processing dates. You'll then upgrade if necessary. Um, now, we do at BCIT offer some upgrading courses in many subject areas. And if you've got questions, definitely contact program advising. We can uh, assist you with this. Ensure that when you apply online, you have all of your required documents, such as transcripts, ready to scan and upload as PDF files. Uh, we do have a web link. It's uh, bcit.ca forward slash admissions sorry, admission, uh, which will guide you through the step-by-step -step application process. But the key here is that you're going to be uploading uh, your documents, your transcripts as PDF files. And once you're ready to apply online, you can visit bcit.ca forward slash apply and uh, submit your application. The application fee for domestic students is $90. And keep in mind, the entire application process takes place online. So again, you'll be converting all of your official transcripts and any documents that are required into PDF files. So for entry, there are academic and non-academic requirements. For the speaking and listening requirement, if you don't have proof of meeting that requirement, there are tests and course options available. Um, note for the chemistry 11 requirements, students, applicants can use chemistry 12 in place of chemistry 11, as long as the same grade requirement is met. And any uh, post-secondary subjects can also be used in place of high school courses. We do allow out of province and international courses. Um, 
And a credential evaluation is not required unless you want to use your international post-secondary courses to meet the academic foundation requirements. Now, if you have any questions regarding equivalencies, post-secondary equivalencies towards the high school requirement or uh, international courses, please do connect with us in program advising. With the non-academic requirements, there's the questionnaire and then there's CASPER. For the mandatory applicant questionnaire, you type right into the form. Please do not cut and paste from another document um, and note that the boxes can't be expanded. So there's some restrictions on just the way the, the form is laid out. So just be aware of that. And with the information that you're providing on that questionnaire, what the selection committee is looking for is relevant work experience. Now, it doesn't have to be health related. It can be customer service experience. It could be serving experience. What they really want to see is your people care and interactions. They're also looking for leadership and teaching skills and that you demonstrate that you can work with all types of people from all different backgrounds and all different ages. And then there's the CASPER test, which is online. This test will utilize everyday scenarios. Um, a moral dilemma is presented to the test taker and there really is no right or wrong answer. So you really can't study for the test as it's not knowledge-based, but there are, um, or there is a full 12 section CASPER sample test available online. And you do need to have a CASPER account to access the sample test, but the test itself is free of charge to use. So definitely take a look at that. There's a lot of information on CASPER on their website to help you prepare for the exam. Please spend time reviewing this information. And if you have any questions about CASPER, you do need to connect with CASPER directly for those. Uh, now, as mentioned, as part of the application, the online application, you will need to upload documents for a timely assessment to be completed. You can download official digital transcripts or you can convert your official paper transcripts and documents to PDF files. Information on how to convert documents to PDFs is available from our website. Um, for example, if you want to scan your documents, you can do that, or you can just take pictures of your official transcripts and then save them as PDF files. Please ensure that you upload all required documents to minimize delays in application processing. So we want to see a complete application at the time that you've submitted it and paid the application fee. So what happens after you've applied um, is that your application will be reviewed by the admissions department to ensure that you fulfill all of the entrance requirements. This process can take up to four weeks, so please do be patient with that. If the requirements have been met, your application is then forwarded to the nursing department for further review. The nursing department uses a rubric to shortlist the strongest candidates. And a final decision is made based on all the documents and tests that you've submitted. The assessment process uh, within the nursing department, so in addition to the, the processing time for um, admissions, um, after the application deadline itself, a final decision, sorry, the assessment process um, takes approximately two to three months. At this time, I think uh, for the next couple of intakes, our uh, processing time after the application deadline is about three months. If you still have specific questions about this process, again, please give us a call or send us an email to program advising. So moving on from the academics, um, I'd just like to share that we at BCIT, we are committed to supporting students in a holistic sense. We want you to succeed not only in your academics, but also outside of school. Some student services, that are available, uh, can be available as a prospective students, while others will only be available once you become an enrolled student at BCIT. Now, there are some important student supports that I'd like to touch on. Uh, the first is uh, Indigenous services. If you are Indigenous, BCIT's Indigenous Initiatives Department is there for you to ensure a smooth transition into your first year. They offer peer-to-peer -peer mentorship, a welcoming gathering place and provide clarification on Indigenous funding. 
BCIT's award scholarships and bursaries are listed on our financial aid and awards webpage. I would like to mention that we have a president's entrance award in which selection is based on academic achievement as well as volunteer and community service. Please contact financial aid directly for more information on uh, any award scholarships and bursaries. BCIT is committed to providing assistance to students with permanent or temporary disabilities. If you have been accepted into a program and believe that you may need accommodation to be successful, I encourage you to connect with our Accessibility Services Department. BCIT Student Health Services is a clinic that's located at the Burnaby campus. They provide medical care for current BCIT students all year round. We also have a counseling and student development department that are available to help you and enhance your educational performance and maximize your success as a student at BCIT. And finally, our rec services promotes, encourages, and enables the practice of physical well being. We consider recreation an integral part of campus life and welcome all students to enjoy their services. As mentioned throughout, please don't hesitate to contact program advising if you have a question or if you're unsure about something. We are able to answer questions regarding entrance requirements, the application process, student resources, success strategies, program schedules, and many other details. We're available to assist you by phone, email, in-person, or virtual appointments. Please go to bcit.ca forward slash advising for the most current contact information and our service hours. If your inquiry is time sensitive, please call us during our telephone advising hours. This is the best option to get your questions answered quickly. Uh, that's it for, from me, back to you, Erin. Thank you very much, Pavina. That was a lot of information. I know that we have gone over some of this rather quickly uh, today. So as mentioned earlier, we are recording this session. Uh, about a week or so after this session, we will be sending all of you a copy of the record, a link to the recording and a copy of the slide deck uh, to the email address that you've used to sign up for the uh, info session. So you do have that information to review later. Uh, so before we continue to some questions and answers, I just wanted to say that in addition to uh, keeping in touch via program advising. We'd love it if you would uh, give us a follow or a like on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, our YouTube channel. Uh, lots of fun ways to connect with us and see kind of what's going on with um, the nursing program and the School of Health Sciences and BCIT as a whole. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting projects this year, um, including a brand new building that we're moving into for September. So uh, we'd love it if you could uh, follow us along and, and take a look at some of those exciting projects. Uh, to learn more about BCIT and the campus, you can also uh, look at our tours website. Uh, we have um, more info sessions other than this this week. This is our first info session of, I think, eight that we're doing this week uh, for different programs. So if you're not sure yet what the future holds for you or what program you want to look at, do check out some of the other info sessions. Um, and then, as we mentioned before, uh, program advising, they are your best bet for any questions that you might have that we aren't able to fully answer today. Uh, now, the uh, important thing too about those questions is a lot of the questions uh, in the chat or in the Q&A function here, um, some of them are very general questions. Some of them are very specific. If you have specific questions concerning your specific transcript or course you've taken, it is best to go through program advising for that because they can look at those details very closely with you. Uh, but we are going to look at some of the questions right now and see um, if we can answer any of them on here. Oh, there's a good one. And I know we already typed the answer to it, but I would love to have somebody answer this out loud if we could. Um, SH is asking, do BC, do BC nursing students get paid during the clinical hours? Now, specifically to BCIT, because I think it's different at different schools, but do BCIT nursing students get paid during the clinical hours? Uh, would anyone like to address that out loud? Um, th about the question about being paid? During clinical hours. Now, I know some schools, uh, maybe in Alberta or elsewhere, they pay, uh, students get paid for <laughs> clinical hours, but do we? Um, not for clinical hours, but hist historically students were paid for Perceptorship, but that's not something that would continue long term, likely. So yes. the answer generally is no. Yes. Good. 
Does anyone want to add anything more about the CASPER test? I know sometimes that can be a bit of a point of confusion for some people. I would just add that if you go to the Altus website, um, they have a lot of information to help you prep for your CASPER and applicants have given us feedback that if you do the sample test, you will, you will be fine. It, the Atlas web, take out Altus website, I'll put it in the chat, has um, excellent information and prep for snapshot video and CASPER test. Thank you. Yeah, so Dean will put that in the chat. That'd be great. It's, it is really something where I know people have a lot of questions about it before they look at the website and they're like, wait, what is this extra thing? Um, but yeah, once you go to the website, do the practice test, read all the information there, you will be pretty set to understand how it all operates and, and feel fairly confident with it. Um, I just wanted to add uh, two in case it wasn't clear uh, from our academic requirements page. Uh, if you remember looking at that slide, you uh, cannot apply to this program straight out of high school. There are some post-secondary requirements that you will need. And I think on one of our slides, we also mentioned uh, for 2021, the average, um, because it's a competitive program, um, so there's a minimum number of credits for post-secondary that you need to apply, but the average was that most students had at least 60 credits in 2021 uh, when they applied to the BSN program. So uh, you cannot come in straight out of high school, but if you are currently in high school, this is a great time to plan out how you're going to get uh, to your dream of being a nurse uh, through this and, and what your path is going to be. Uh, it's just not there. Maybe as simple as going straight from high school to BCIT, but uh, it is a good time uh, to start planning your path. Uh, Colleen is asking, um, maybe this is a question that perhaps Dina could answer again, are Casper and Snapshot equally weighted in the evaluations or is one considered more important? Hi Colleen, they're equally weighted. Thank you. So those are equally weighted. Okay. Uh, Marcus has a question here, and I'm not really sure about what he means by that, by this. It says, is the BC government still paying for the BCIT nursing program? Marcus, you might have to give us a bit more information about what you're meaning with that question. And again, if you have questions about specific courses or specific things on your transcript, it really is best to talk to program advising uh, directly by either one of their uh, phone or in-person appointments or by sending them an email if you can wait a bit. Oh, Shelly, would you like to come on and talk about uh, Marcus's question about BC government paying for the nursing program? Sure, I'm happy to. Hi, everybody. I'm Shelley Fraser, the Associate Dean for the Nursing Program, and thanks to our program heads that are facilitating today. Nice to see all 50 odd of you on the call. Um, just in terms of funding, Marcus, I just want to say we are afforded seats as a school. Uh, so we are funded by the Ministry of Health for 64 seats or intakes three times a year. And we did receive additional funding for an expansion that will launch in September where we will see an extra 32 seats in our school. So it's an excellent time to apply. And um, we look forward to helping you through the process and perhaps welcoming you, some of you in January. Thanks. So I think I just want to add to that, Shelley. Um, I think Marcus, um, that's funding, the government is funding for BCIT to be able to run the program. It's not funding that goes to students who are coming to the program. So it's, it's, it's yes. It's correct. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Haya is asking approximate tuition fees per year. This is always a great question. Does anybody have this information handy? Hi, Erin. Hi, um, Dina. Check our website under tuition, but I can tell you each term, and there's three terms per year, is approximately $2,600 tuition. On top of that is your textbooks and student fees, et cetera. But all the fees are broken down on the website under degree tuition. Thank you very much, Dina. That's always a good question for people. I know it can be a bit to kind of go into the website and, and figure out exactly which program has which fees and, and to add that all up. Um, Aaron, I just want to yeah. address, there's been a couple of questions regarding um, English proficiencies. So I just want to clarify that if you've completed high school in Canada or another English speaking country, um, you can use your high school transcripts to meet the two years of education in English in an English speaking country requirement. If you immigrated to Canada or another English speaking country and you completed say only grades 11 and 12, so two years, um, you might wanna just connect with us um, 
in program advising, just so that we can walk you through the specifics of how we're counting that two years of education and what courses you would have had to take academic uh, versus um, uh, say English upgrading courses. So we can just provide you some more clarification on that if you'd like, but do send us an email or give us a call or see us during our virtual or in-person drop-ins for that question. Thank you, Bavina. That really helps clarify some of that. Um, and Dina is currently typing an answer to the question here about um, wait lists. Uh, now, I do want to note that the BCIT nursing program does not carry a wait list. Uh, you apply if you get accepted. Yay. If you don't get accepted, you do have to reapply for the following intake. Each intake, each application period is a new competitive group, a new competitive process. So um, sometimes people do apply more than once and it's totally welcome to, but we do urge you to look at upgrading some of your experiences, some of your courses or uh, some of your um, extra experiences uh, before you apply again. But uh, yes, we do not carry a wait list and you may have to reapply. And I'm not sure um, if uh, perhaps Dina or Lorraine could answer this question. Is there a typical GPA needed from university for a successful applicant? Um, we'd have to kind of look at what historically uh, maybe the last few intakes have been. Do we have a typical GPA we could say? Hi, Erin. It's Lorreen. Hi. Um, we would prefer 3.0 and above, but we're not actually looking for a specific GPA at this time. I the, higher the, the higher the GPA, then... Um, more competitive the file becomes. Exactly, yeah, good point. Um, yes, I think we answered that question. Okay, clicking that off. Uh, does anyone wanna talk about um, courses transferring into the BSN program and are there any courses that transfer in or is it just a full program and you take all the courses? Hi, Erin. We do answer Hi. that question on our website, and the, the courses are very nursing specific, and they're all co-requisites to each other. So there's no transfer credit into the BSN with the exception of the liberal studies courses. There's two liberal studies courses, um, health ethics and critical reading and writing, that you may have credit from your previous education, or those courses are the only ones you could take ahead of time through part-time studies. Erin, I'd also like to clarify the waitlist question. You're correct, yes. we don't carry, we don't have a traditional waitlist where you go on and you wait, but we do keep a small waitlist for the immediate intake of people who ranked not high enough to get in the class, but high enough to be on the waitlist. Should someone who was successful um, decline their seat, we go to the waitlist, but it's for the intake they apply to only. We don't carry waitlist into the future. Once the course program starts, the wait list is closed, you must reapply and recompete. Yes, thank you for that clarification. That's important, thanks, Dina. I think I will just um, give some time maybe for you guys to type answers into the, we have a number of people on BCIT, from BCIT that I should mention here, actually, that are typing answers into the chat. So as well as Bavina and Jim, who you met, we have Shelley Frazier who came on camera, our Associate Dean for the nursing program. We have Dina Bedard and Lorreen, uh, Martin, who are our um, administrative coordinators and selections team for the program. Connie Clark, who is another program head, uh, along with Jim for the program. And then my two marketing counterparts, uh, Julie Alley and Darren Tan, who are posting things into uh, the chat function and posting all those web links for you. So I want to thank everybody from BCIT that's come on to this webinar today to answer your questions. Uh, but as I mentioned before, I'm going to go to my final slide here. This is the most important email address you will have when you are trying to figure out your application for uh, BCIT's nursing program or any of BCIT's programs. Program underscore advising at bcit.ca. They really are your biggest resource uh, when uh, answering any specific questions that you might have, helping you decide which program you should look at applying to, uh, making sure your application meets all the requirements, and trying to figure out how competitive your application is. They can help you with all of that, Trans um, which 
courses are equivalent. Uh, so I do it, urge all of you uh, to, um, after this session, if you have any additional questions to contact program advising. And I think with that, we are going to end things off this morning. This was uh, quite good. Um, uh, I don't know if someone can, oh, looks like we have a few more questions. You guys keep asking more questions. David actually has a really good one. I like this one. For calculating an applicant's GPA, are all post-secondary courses taken into consideration or is it just the post-secondary courses that are prerequisites? Can somebody answer that question out loud? Hi, Erin. Hi. All your courses in GPA are taken into consideration and it is cumulative. Wonderful. Thank you for answering that one. Okay, great. And I think with that, we're going to kind of close it off for this morning. Thank you everyone for coming online and attending. And again, you will receive a copy of this slide deck as well as a link to the video probably in about a week, a week and a half after the session. And you'll get that through your email. Uh, but please continue to reach out to us, follow us on social, connect with program advising in the meantime, read through our website. There's an awful lot of information there too. Uh, and we really, uh, again, appreciate your time spent with us today. Thanks, bye.